it has to be like around the content and it has to be very real and very raw and you know maybe it's even just people telling their stories and you know a little right. bit like hey here's my story and it's tough and tough to hear but I, I you know I want to I don't want to be stuck in this story I want to write it right so you mean you're not going to give them an overnight at Snoop's house? Just to- <laughs> <laughs> somehow I don't think as much as Snoop does work with underprivileged kids. Somehow I don't think that would be the most a- way to go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks again. Thank sure, you. Fine. Okay. And there's a couple other people are pinging me. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop to Shark. And I know, ladies, we have a couple of guys in here that knew that that Ryan was going to be on here, and they asked if they could come. But since we have 30 minutes, I'll move around as many as I can. So Shark, go ahead. Come on, sweetheart. Make sure you're unmuted. Oh, my office texted me 11:25. I have to run. So five. okay. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Okay. Um, Ryan, appreciate you talking. Love Sunny from the MLG days. Uh, quick question is just how you met Bobby and your team at in your team at Proxima. I'm very curious about that. Sure. A lot of people ask me about how I met Bobby, which is a really funny story. So I had just gotten, uh, uh, just moved, just gotten divorced about a year prior. And I was looking at where I was going to live. And so I ended up renting a place in, because everybody in LA knows the 10,000 building, which is right on Santa Monica and that, that tall building um, and Century Park East. And um, I, I was very, uh, kind of very, um, a homebody. I don't go out much. So the building was a very popular building and there's a third floor bar lounge area. And so I was always outside downstairs there with my, at the time he was two, three years old. And there was always a lot of people around. Um, and there was always this guy sitting at the bar who Bobby, who I started talking to and getting to know and Tommy who is very, my son, who is very, very discerning on people, just took this immediate liking to Bobby. And Bobby actually doesn't like kids. He'll say, I don't like kids. And yet, Tommy didn't want to be with anybody else. And Bobby somehow got obsessed with Tommy. So we would basically be, you know, outside all the time together. And, you know, I, his life story is very interesting. He's one of the smartest people I've met. And so for about a year and a half, we were just friends. Um, and when Triller came across my desk, I was like, okay, this technology does not seem right. And I don't know much about the music business. So I started calling around to different people I would normally bring in to help and realized sitting there with Bobby when he was like, wait a minute, Bobby was worked at IBM in the Watson program. He's an engineer and he's also a music producer, um, you know, and very successful music producer. So I literally said to him, can you come look at this company with me? I want to get your take. And that's legitimately how it started. Um, the rest of the team, a lot of them worked with me oh, 15, 10, 10 to 15 to 20 years. So Mahi, who's our CEO and chairman, we, we founded a company together in 1999 called Precash that he was the fifth employee at VeriSign, um, founder of Opera, so on and so forth, um, Opera Browser. And so I, uh, we, he had sold, he, he went on to be the chairman of Precash for us and sold it very successfully. I called him when we first did this to say, can you help me? Since he's kind of an e-commerce expert, um, Alex Iovovich, who is the head of TNT at, at now at um, Jeffries, but before that was at Deutsche, has been my banker for about 15 years. Um, all the way to even our head of content, uh, Daniel's worked with me for 15, 16 years. Um, Jason Barhide, eight years. So it's really a team that as I keep going, I'm hiring more and more people back from you know, people I've just known a long time that can get the job done. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of new people as well that are really good at what they do. We have a very young, about 200 of our employees are under 25. Um, so we have a very young uh, employee base as well. It's a very interesting dynamic because the world of kids today who, who you know, kind of call it under 30 year old kids have a very different work dynamic than what, we did when we were in our 20s and um you know you've got a group of 20 year olds who basically having their opinion acted on is more important than them following their job and it's a very weird balance um so you know when we were 20 it was like we got worked 100 hours a week and you did what you were told and you didn't you didn't give your opinion unless you're asked here it's like they'd rather lose their job and give their opinion so also melding these things together is a unique Okay. Wow. Well, Shark, did you get your answer, bud? Of course. <laughs> appreciate it. Okay. Now we got Kim Cook. 
She's been holding her hand up, waving to going, hey, you want to talk to Ryan? <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for being here today. And I, I can't tell you how impressed I am that you said, text me, I'll, I'll work with you guys. And yes, I want to get involved in your inclusion. That's amazing that you're so open. Um, I'm the director of food and beverage with Galaxy Theaters, which is a West Coast based theater chain in Sherman Oaks. Um, and I'm a little bit of everything, especially these days, I think probably like a lot of people on this call. So you seem to have your fingers in everything. How do you balance it all? How do you manage to keep the passion there? How do you not get lost in any one area and make sure it's all still staying afloat? <laughs> oh, I, I don't. <laughs> um, no, I, you know, um, one is that uh, I learned and it took me a long time to learn this, that I can't micromanage everything. I've got to rely on my team and I've got to trust my team. And sometimes that doesn't work um, and you should change teams, um, but it's impossible otherwise. Uh, two is that um, I make sure I actually used to not turn off ever. I used to just be 24 <clears> seven. <throat> now, because I have a, probably a six year old who literally will go like this, daddy, it's the weekend, you're not allowed to work and take my phone away. Um, you know, I try to put my work time in and then my family time in and uh, having that balance also enables me to spend the time thinking and organizing my thoughts of the, the, the most important pieces to execute on and how to create a plan. Um, and then third is I've just learned just two things you're passionate about. So things that I might have done before that I was like, oh, well, they're good money making or they have a big chance of success, but I don't have any passion in it, you know it's kind of like life's too short, you know, like money doesn't really buy happiness. Um, you know, as, as Einstein said, you know, being a man of virtue or a woman of virtue is more important um, than, than being a person of success. And so I think, you know, everybody thinks, oh, I have to be successful. And I was in that trap for sure. But one day you just go, well, what is success? And success is being happy and enjoying my family and my life and my job 